Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm gonna be going over this Saturday's, I guess what they're calling it a main slate, um, full 10 game slate, including eight games at one o'clock Eastern and two at four o'clock. Uh, Sundays only have a three game slate, but we're gonna cover all of it. And we are gonna go live, or at least I will at 11 o'clock AM on Saturday to capture the late injury news and updated projections and the lineup builds and things like that. Um, there's only a handful of games that have a, have a decent total here so it's it rates to be probably a low scoring slate um and it's going to be interesting to see what happens so we're going to go through this kind of game by game and i'm kind of going to breeze through it i think a little bit uh i, I have the 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 stacks and the, the games that uh that i'm sort of interested in and i have a couple of good plays and we'll just see if those kind of hold throughout the next couple of days and i do have a couple of i guess they call it hashtag football takes you know, that might you know, kind of trump some of the projections, but try not to let uh, let that happen all too much. So right off the bat, we have Houston and Tennessee, and the, the obvious play from this game is going to be Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry is going to project as probably one of the top three, um, if not the top overall play on the slate of any position, um, and at running back against the Houston team that, that you know, can give up a ton of yards. Uh, and Derrick Henry tends to do very well later in the season when all these defensive players are just kind of over it. <laughs> Don't feel like getting in the way anymore. And you got a team like Houston has been so feisty the last several weeks, almost beating Kansas City a few weeks ago, almost beating Dallas, almost beating everybody. And they just can't keep putting up that type of effort forever. And, and you know, you, they see kind of the end of the season kind of around the corner and Derrick Henry running downhill at their at their face. I mean, you know, it's just – it's a tough scene, man, for some of these defensive guys against Henry in, in, in December. It's not that he's the Hember and it's the cold and all that stuff. It's that the defensive guys have been have been plugging away all year and they just don't feel like getting in the way anymore, as far as I'm concerned. So I think Derrick Henry's gonna probably rush for 200 yards, get a bunch of touchdowns and score 40 fantasy points like everybody's expecting. Um, and he's gonna be extremely high owned. That's that's my comment here. If you want to pivot off of him, you can play a Conklu, uh, the tight end on the Tennessee side. And then on the Houston side, you have the return of Brandon Cooks at an extremely reduced uh, mutual, so to speak, at 4,900. I think he's in play. Uh, you have Traylon Burks, who he practiced. So that is something. Um, and what does this mean for Chris Moore is going to be an interesting question. So you do have three receivers that are pretty interesting. Um they're all pretty cheap um, against a team like Tennessee who, you know, he's, they're a really good team, but the only way, not the only way, but the main way you beat them is through the air. So I guess right off the bat, I, I'd be willing to take a shot, you know, and play Davis Mills with two of these, two of the aforementioned receivers, uh, Cooks, Burks, Moore, maybe even the tight end and, and obviously run it back with Henry and, and or a and, and uh, actually a Conklu was, yeah, and right back with the Conquo. So again, it's 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 Davis Mills with Cooks, Moore, and Burks, some combination of those, and you can run that back with uh, with with Henry. Or the, another way to say it is play Henry and run it back with all those guys. Whatever. I do expect Tennessee to win, but they're only a three and a half point favorite. It's not like that big of a deal. So um, anyway, uh, I think right off the bat, it's kind of I don't know if it's going to be lower owned. It stinks because Henry is going to be hugely popular. Um, I don't know if. People are going to go the Houston route, but I think I am. Moving on, uh, Atlanta, Baltimore, uh, just literally no interest in this whatsoever. You have the teams that rate poorly in, as far as stacks go, poorly as far as the individual plays go. It's just, to me, I, I really just have no interest in this game at all. Um, okay, uh, Detroit against Carolina. This is one of a number of weather games. Um, if this game were at Detroit or if this game were earlier in the season or whatever it is, you could make a case for all the new normal Detroit guys we've been playing all year. You know, I'm on St. Brown, DeAndre Swift, Goff at the quarterback, you know, um, and, uh, however, you know, this is, this is different. The weather stinks. It's cold. It's windy. It's gross. Carolina is not exactly the worst defensive team either. So if people go to this Detroit business, I think, I think it's probably, I think you're asking for it. The other thing I would say, though, it does rate to be something. They do rate to be somewhat low owned. 
So if you can get Detroit low on, maybe it's worth a shot. And then you know, you, you probably want to rather use DJ Moore on the Carolina side and or even the Terrence Marshall is not so bad either. All right. Um, Buffalo against Chicago. Um, I was expecting to see Buffalo show up as kind of a better play, but just not. Again, th th this wind is in Chicago, the Windy City and all that. I mean, this is this can be bad, you know, and, and, and the, the difference between a good weather game and a bad weather game in the winter is just a really, really big deal, you know. Um, and I'll take the cold, but the wind and the rain and the grossness, it just it just makes a difference. You know, I, I can't say for sure that that the Buffalo Chicago games get outscored Houston, Tennessee, you know, it, it, it's, uh, you get a little bit better weather in one place than the other. That's the way it is. Um, so probably going to be off of this. I, I don't really, not really getting into too much of the running backs either. Um, I hate to, to, to fade everything, but you know, there are only a handful of guys that really have too much interest in here. All right. So, and then we go on to new Orleans, Cleveland, I mean, I'm not getting much of them either. I mean, to put this in perspective, okay, three, four, five, six. I mean, I have Buffalo and Detroit rated eighth and ninth out of 20 teams. I mean, if you consider that good, then you could just go ahead and stack the game, you know, play and play both sides of it. You want to know the truth. Um, but I just want to get greedy. I want to just take teams that rate a little bit better. And we're going to be getting to those in a little bit. Um, but not here. Uh, New Orleans, Cleveland, yet another going to be probably another crappy day for Deshaun Watson, you know, and, and Andy Dalton's terrible. You have Kamara. I mean, is he going to show up as a decent play at 6,800? I mean, maybe, but I would just kind of rather not do it. <laughs> you know, um, I think they're just better running back plays. And I think this game is going to be kind of gross and, it's just better games to get to, and we're going to get to one of them right now, right? So, so Kansas City is going to be cold, but but whatever. It's not going to be raining and gross and and snowing, and you have all kinds of offense in this game. Not only do you have all kinds of offense in this game, but you have a key injury on the Seattle side, that being uh, Tyler Lockett being down. So, so you have not only a just ridiculous smash play in in DK, in DK Metcalf, but you have a lot of crap that you can play here. I'm not saying he's crap, but Marquis Goodwin at 4,300 as going to be legit number two receiver in, in a positive, well, to say negative game, sure, well, it's positive for him. You know, they're going to have to be throwing the ball probably quite a bit in this game, and he's the second receiver. I mean, let's go, right? And then, I mean, I have Seattle overall as my, what is this, fifth best, no, sixth best overall stack, right? And then you could play, you know what else you could play? This guy's really good. Well, he's not really, we don't know what he is, but he's a rookie, um, Derek Young. I don't know if he's gotten in yet, but this could be a good opportunity to see what he could do. He had all kinds of good stats from the combines at, at 3K to win a million dollars. Let's go, right? And then you have obviously Noah Fant. Um, he's always in play. He's good for five targets a game when he's healthy. Um, let's see. Let's see if he let's see if he doesn't play. If he doesn't play, then Will Disley's gonna play. You know what I mean? Like, but there's all kinds of incredible targets from Seattle to play. Why am I messing around with any of these other games, honestly? And you have then Kenneth Walker third, who has not been practicing, you know, which is a little bit annoying. Um if he plays though, uh, I'm in. <laughs> That's just it. Just more part of this game stack, more part of part of this stuff. Um, if he doesn't play, I'll tell you what I'm not doing. I'm not going to go for the, the Travis Homer, you know, experience. And that, that was not, it's not a pleasant one. Let's go right back to the Seattle receivers. I'll play Geno Smith and, and rock the house. Speaking of rocking the house, you have Patrick Mahomes, not only being left with a wide open path to MVP by Jalen Hurts sitting, but he also has all kinds of records that he's chasing and all this stuff, not to mention locking up good seeds. So, um, they're, they're gonna he's obviously in play um and the usual issues of who to pair him with well first of all Jarek mckinnon i mean it's kind of hard to dispute eight targets and nine targets and a million fantasy points two games in a row i mean if you don't play him i mean you just do that at your own risk that's best i could describe it 
And receivers, you have Juju Smith-Schuster, who's very reliable nowadays at 5,800. And interestingly, you have Nicole Hardman coming off of the injured list, uh, which puts him in play. It puts uh, maybe Sky Moore out of play, maybe Watson out of play. Uh, Tony, I'm just not playing. Uh, maybe I'll play a little bit just because, if I listen, if I do stack this game and this is the game that Canaries 25 and decide to become a, an NFL wide receiver, I'll probably want it. Uh, if this decides to be the game that MVS, now the Scantling, actually decides to be a competent wide receiver, and I have this game stacked, I probably want it. And obviously, Travis Kelsey uh, is a tough guy to get to, but, you know, he certainly should be included in stacks. Noah Gray, 2,600. This this game is just loaded, so I'm going to be all over this. Uh, Minnesota, uh, New York. Um, it's a tough one because Minnesota does rate as the top uh, overall stack for me on the board because you know what they have like incredible skill position guys. They have Justin Jefferson. They have uh, uh, what's his name, uh, Dalvin Cook. They have Hawkinson. You know they you can play Thielen if you want. The there's issues and then there's 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 uh, retorts to the issues. One issue is that the Giants do blitz a lot, and Minnesota does not do well. Cousins does not do well typically against blitzes. However, with blitzes also comes, you know, lots of man-to-man -man coverage. And man-to-man -man coverage against Justin Jefferson is not very healthy for the for the brand. Okay. But you have this dude from the Giants, just Thibodeau is like literally all over the field. Maybe he just does everything. I don't know. Um, so they're gonna rate to be the top overall stack, top overall play. But what would you rather have, Jefferson or Derrick Henry? I actually don't know the answer. Um, the Giants, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, I do still show Barkley as a really good play. Can't prove it, but uh, he looks to be a good play. Excuse me. Fortunately, Minnesota doesn't give up. I mean, gives up quite a bit of yards rushing. And you, but however, you have Barkley who's not been able to do anything, but I'll probably play him. And you have two cheapos from the Giants uh, receiving core, that being Richie James and Isaiah Hudgens, who are cheap enough that they're going to be included in, in, in these game stacks. So, uh, yes, there are paths to failure, but this is a very easy, you know, situation. Minnesota rates the best. You have cheapo, you have a combination of, of a decent run back in Barkley and some cheapo wide receivers. So, this is a game you probably want to go after. And remember, this is better weather than almost any other game. All right, Cincinnati at New England. Um, and I did mention Dalvin Cook, right? I did, yeah, Dalvin Cook. Um, New England, Cincinnati, I have two things about this game. Number one, I do have Cincinnati rated uh, as a, a playable stack. I have them rated seventh or so, which is not bad. And I actually have New England rated kind of 10th. That's not bad. Um so I, I don't mind the Cincinnati stat, but Ramondre Stevenson play remains kind of elite. So I like that. Um, so Ramondre Stevenson is one of my top five running backs. I already mentioned Henry, Barkley, Cook. Stevenson's a fourth, and it's not going to take a genius to come up with the fifth, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, but overall, I think Cincinnati's offense is a good is a good. Uh, they're a good stack in general. I mean, they're fighting the same type of weather I think as some of these other teams, though. So we have to see. I, I just prefer to play that Kansas City game. Um, and even the Minnesota game where I can just uh, have a better idea of what the weather's going to be. We'll see. If, if it's just cold in New England, fine. But if it's cold, snow, wet, you know, who needs it? All right, moving on, Washington, San Francisco, as I just alluded to. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, you know, I have him rated, what, fifth? But, you know, whatever. Henry Barkley, Stevenson, Cook, C-Mac, they're all, they're all really good plays. Um, I don't have any real interest in the game itself. It rates to be extremely low scoring. You want to go play, you know, Terry McLaurin on the Washington side. That's fine. I, I just, I just can't do anything against San Francisco right now. I, I'm, I'm just not interested in playing any offensive players against them. So then you get, you get what could be one of the great traps in, 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 in DFS. Um, I, 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 it, it hit me like, a ton of bricks. It hit me like a 
to turn a phrase from apocalypse now like a diamond like in right in the forehead it's like a clear as crystal that Gardner Minshew is going to be a colossal bust this week. It just hit me. Okay. This this is this is the deal. You have Jalen Hurts, who had shoulder, you know, he hurt his shoulder, I guess, last game. They want to rest him, or they or he's hurt, or a combination of the two. They're basically, you know, daring Dallas to win out and Philly to lose out or whatever, and daring other teams to win out before Philadelphia loses the number one seed. Uh I will say I imagine he's hurt because he's basically giving up the MVP to sit out. Um, and they have this idea that Minshew is just going to step right in and just do the same thing. Uh, not the same thing, but him at 4,800, he's still got these weapons and people are going to do this. They're going to play all the, all the Minshew and they're going to, you know, they, they, and you know what they do? They look and they say, okay, they, he still has these same receivers he can go to. Goddard is back. Life is easy. Not to mention the fact that Dallas is, um, you know, their 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 secondary is kind of hurt, and forty, you know, forty points they just gave up to Jacksonville, which everybody just saw. Uh, let me tell you something about Dallas. Okay, uh, I, Dallas might be many things. They might be like a ridiculously poorly run franchise. They might be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Dysfunctional. The coach might whatever. One thing about the Dallas Cowboys I know from being a human being alive is this team has, has – they have more ego and more pride as a franchise than any other team in the NFL. And can you imagine, like, they're like – they've been waiting for this Jalen Hurts game for the whole year. And Jalen Hurts, I don't even need – we don't even need him. We don't even need him. Go ahead, Minshew, just come on in. I think Dallas is going to pound on this team. I just do. Um, and I think they're playing all the Philly guys is a mistake. That, that's where I'm going to be. Um, what can I tell you? Uh, you want to play, listen, you want to play Minshew in cash just because you can play him at 4,800, fine. People also have this memory of Minshew. Um, I think it was last year, at least it was last year or the year before where uh, the quarterback was out and he came right on in, just picked up right where the other guy left off, came off the bus with the mustache, with the beard, and beat the Jets on the road or something like that. And they just feel we could just step right in again. This, listen, this, this, it's, it's much different when you have to operate kind of this well-oiled machine. I mean, you got to be like a, if you're like a, if they put me in like in, in a NASCAR car, like a, like the, like in a Kyle Larson car, I wouldn't know how to drive that thing. I, I would run it into the freaking wall. And that's what you're going to get when you put Minshew into this, into this spot. Okay. He's not going to be able to run the offense like Jalen Hurts. And they're not going to probably change much. You know, um, I think Dallas really sticks it to them in this game. Uh, I, I, if 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 Minshew and all the Eagles guys end up high owned, someone else can play them. That's just that's just where I'm going to be. Um, Dallas, and so I'm going to be one of those guys that's going to be proud of my score at one o'clock and root against this stuff. So we'll see what happens. I guess. Or am I going to at the very end just suck it up and just play all this? What I will play is Dallas, actually. So that's that's what I will do in this game. I will play Prescott. I will play Schultz. I will play C.D. Lamb. I will play Noah Brown. And and I will play – I don't know which of these running backs I'm going to play. Maybe play some of each of them. And I am playing this game like Dallas can just – is going to have a really good game. I can play the Dallas defense. Um. So this might be a kind of – this is going to be either a really popular take or kind of a really stupid take, but that's where I am at in this game. So that will be doing it. Uh, hopefully uh, Santa Claus doesn't come down the chimney after I make this ridiculous attempt to uh, approach the slate and put coal in my – is that what they do? The coal? Coal in the, in the stocking? Well, we'll see. Um, I encourage everybody to join us at around 11, on, or at least me, at 11 on Saturday when I go through more of this. And uh, good luck.